It's happy hour. We're back. So happy to be here. It's been a couple weeks, um, as it always is. We do this twice a month. Welcome, Pioneer DJ's Happy Hour. I'm DJ J. Brand. I'm your host today. We've got a full show. Really excited about everything going on. As always, I have my producer JP over here. And it's the day after St. Patty's Day. So we're giving you a little bit of the uh, the Emerald Isle with the DJS 1000 to my right. Um, as always, I'm supported by XMG, my laptop here, one of our partners for the Pioneer DJ Happy Hour. Today's show, packed. We've got a quick update to Rekordbox with Android on the app. We're going to bring in Pulse for that, the Rekordbox Ninja, and as I found out today, New York Times bestselling author. We also have from BeatSource and Beatport, Jonas Temple. He is going to talk all about streaming, which I am seriously excited about because now with BeatSource Link, using record box you've got the locker you can save things you can go through playlists it's there's a lot going on and i think it's going to be a huge benefit when our season starts in earnest coming up in the next few months um and then we're going to go to my boy sitting back east somewhere cold dj crema Rata cream he's going to be talking about mixing it up latin vibe i'm in socal i do a lot of events weddings where i'm playing a lot of different variances of latin music so it's going to be exciting to see what he has to say to us about that. But it is happy hour. I'm already getting a little parched, even though we haven't been on very long. So I should have, as my producer pointed out, I should have brought a Guinness or a harp or something with a little bit more Irish, considering I'm rocking a clatter. But today we're just doing a quick IPA, a little Lagunitas. I've got mine. Uh, my producer has his. Ah, there we go. Okay, quick sip. Cheers to everybody. Hope you have a beverage, water, juice, milk, soda, whatever you want. Cheers. Great way to start. All right. Really quick news thing. Um, you can put it in if you're watching us on Twitch, you're already there. Facebook, if you don't know our other social media handles, they're all at Pioneer DJ USA. So it's YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitch, all of them at Pioneer DJ USA. We also have some giveaways today. We're working on how we're going to do this. I think on the Facebook side, if you share the stream on your page, you're going to automatically be entered in to win. You're going to love this. We have three record box DJ licenses that I believe we could also exchange instead of a license for a pair of headphones. And then Jonas is going to go into more detail about the beat source pro license that he's bringing. He's got three of them that he's going to give away today. So there's a lot going on. So I don't want to kind of waste a lot of time with me rambling and stuff when we've got really all killer, no fillers. So we're going to move right ahead. First bit of news I got to tell you about. If you've got an XDJ XZ, new firmware update 1.2, fixed a few little bug issues, but also gives you a better view of the main screen as well as enhances looping functionality. So if you've got an XDJ XZ, now would be the time to go out. You can go to pioneerdj.com, download the driver, download the firmware, whatever you need to get everything up and running the right way, install it. We've got everything you need right there for that. We've also just launched um, Rekordbox app for Android. So we're excited about that. We have a lot of Android users around the world that wanted this. So we're now, as I said earlier, we're gonna kick it up to the great white north with Again, I didn't know this until today. New York Times bestselling author and record box ninja. We're going to bring Pulse on at this time. Pulse, are you there, my friend? Hey, Jay, I'm coming to you from the uh, the woods here, and uh, I hope you can hear oh, me. I can. Cheers. <laughs> Drinkless right now. I, I haven't caught myself any uh, the wild beer, so I, oh. I, I better get out and get one soon. Vancouver has a lot of beer that grows naturally in the forest. I've heard. This is true, yeah. Yeah, high alcohol percent too, which is not a bad thing. So tell me, Record Box, the app for Android. Yeah, Lots so we we'd been uh, you know moved forward when we moved to Record Box six with uh, the new Record Box Cloud Sync and the ability to use this wonderful new app that we had for iOS. But all the Android users kind of got stuck out in the cold and it's it's not because we don't love you guys it's just a little bit more challenging to develop for such a broad platform so we now finally have version 3.0 of the app which introduces uh, the same level of uh, integration with Rekordbox as the iOS app does so we're happy to finally have gotten this update out 
That's awesome. Yeah, I know it, it was something that went on and on. And I know you and I discussed this because we have, you know, I'm still using the Nokia 5690 that I got back in the late 90s. <laughs> Your old, old flip phone candy bar? Yeah. <laughs> Just, you know, you hit each button like three times if you want to text. But a lot of people had asked me, and they're like, you know, why isn't it so simple to get an Android app up as it is to get an iOS app? And I just simply told them what I think, you know, I'm repeating you in op in terms. You know what? How many versions of Android are out there running simultaneously? You know, yeah, a lot, a lot more than iOS. There's, it's called fragmentation. And unfortunately, uh, because of the, the variations, even in the handsets or, or, or tablets, um, there's just so many different uh, platforms and, and variations of the operating system that getting it right is, is a tough thing. But uh, we've managed, uh, you see it on my screen here, we've managed to get it so that it operates in pretty much the same way as the iOS app. The, the only one difference that I will point out is that you can't currently connect to a CDJ uh, and that's because of limitations in how the network architecture is designed on the CDJs and XDJs. Perfect. But other than that, it's now all the Android users that. Yeah, I mean, you've you've got your collection management. You've got the ability to to open up players and and manage your your songs and set hot cues. And there's a cool new function here where you can actually have two songs up at the same time. So you could you could practice uh, a preview of the of the song so you can sync them both together at the same time and. And say, oh man, this is a great mix, and you can save this into playlists. You can manage it all, and if you're using the cloud sync, of course, this is it's synchronized automatically directly through the cloud. But if you're not, you can just use your Wi-Fi sync back over to Recordbox. So it's yeah, this is great for on-the-go management of your songs to preview them, to add hot cues, uh, to adjust waveforms, make you know, all all of these things that you would normally be doing at home, do it on the go. Awesome. Now, um, before I let you go, you're going to be in the chat room because I might call am. you throughout the show about giving away this insanely huge prize package we have today. For yeah. So you're going to be in the Twitch chat, right? Correct. So I think to start with, let's start by giving away a Recordbox DJ license. I'm, I'm thinking a trivia question. You got anything that's uh, kind of pioneer DJ? I, I think I'll, I'll, I'll pop something in there and we'll uh, we'll make sure it gets back into your ear so you can announce the winner there too. Perfect. All right, my friend. As always, appreciate it. Thank you for taking the time today. We appreciate your help in the chat and with here. everything that is record box. So we're going to let you go. And in just a moment, we're going to be bringing up Jonas Temple from Beat Source. Um, he's actually one of the founders of Beatport. We were talking off air about some music way back in the day. So. This is a really, really cool guy. DJ, very into the industry, very into the whole streaming thing that's going on right now and supporting us as DJs. Because as we move forward, you know, we were even talking about going vinyl to CD, CD to flash drive, flash drive to laptop. That, you know, there's always a new transition. And I'm a great example of somebody that tends to do a little kickback, like, no, I'm good with where I am. I don't really need to move forward. And, you know, at first streaming was one of those things, but now I'm looking at the advantageous aspects that can happen at an event instantaneously. And I got to be honest, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sold and I'm really looking forward to how this is going to enhance my events going forward. So no further ado, founder of Beatport and now with BeatSource, I want to bring in Jonas Temple. Jonas, how are you, sir? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Um, water milk soda beer your drink of choice today just want to give you a quick cheers thank you cheers. again for being on thanks for having thanks. me it's awesome absolutely absolutely now before we I get feel, right I, I feel like you guys are dominating me in the background game sorry for my lame background you know what i think it shows that you're at work you're a serious <laughs> man you're obviously making copies of stuff you know That's i mean right. you guys need copies let me know <laughs> it's it's <laughs> We, another income stream. Look at that. Yep. Another business to capitalize on. Right. Tomorrow, Jonas presents. Making copies. Copy. Yep. Making copies. Making copies. All right. <laughs> um, before we get right into the topic of discussion about streaming and BeatSource Link and everything that it can do now for our users, yeah, you know, give us a quick little background on you. I know you and I talked yesterday about your experience as a DJ and being in the industry, but you know, for those that may not be familiar with you, you know, quick little backstory if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, sure. Um, well, um, where do I start? So I guess I'll start with the Diet Coke story. Uh, when I was 21, I quit drinking. Um, no, no real disaster story or anything, just a family choice. And um, 
I actually felt like a really lame person, to be honest, because I was like, what the heck am I going to do as a 21 year old? If I don't drink, you kind of, you know, that's the whole point of being 21, actually. And um, so I started BJ and I, I met these guys and um, was exposed to my first like true like underground experiences. Uh, and I was instantly hooked. Um, it, was, it was a totally life changing moment. And I went. Uh, you know, within a year, and I think this is probably true with most people who discovered D DJing within a year, everything about my life had changed pretty much everything. And I was all in and I, and I caught the bug and I've never looked back. That was 30 years ago. Um, wow. And I, um, you know, it was a time, and I think we were talking about it the other day. It was a time when, you know, there really wasn't touring DJs. There was resident DJs. That's when I started. And so you fell in love with these, you know, the big notorious nightclubs at the time uh, and their resident DJs and they were kind of the heroes. Um, and so they were my idols. And, you know, as, as every DJ, I amassed a big record collection. And, um, and then I don't, I, I don't exactly remember the, the, the year, but I would say it was 2001, 2002. Um, we started seeing uh, Final Scratch for the first time. And um, I was just amazed. And uh, it was such a cool um, idea to like DJ out of a laptop with these control vinyls. And uh, it was so controversial and so disruptive that I was just drawn to it. I don't know why I was just, I'm kind of always that person who gets sucked into the, to the trend. And so um, a friend of mine named Eloy, he purchased Final Scratch and he started recording uh, his record collection into his laptop. And so every week we would go to his house and like record these records. It was like the lamest existence ever. But uh, Eloy was such a perfectionist that he would take all the pops and scratches out and like the, the audio was basically pristine. And one day we asked each other literally like, well, why the heck can't you just buy this music? What the, what's the problem? <laughs> and so we're machine. like, it, it starts digital. Why can't we just buy it? And so, you know, that, that started this down this path of what, what ultimately became Bport. And, um, and so it was really Eloy and I, and then I grabbed another friend of mine, Brad Roulier, who was the promoter at the club that I was DJing at and because he knew everybody. And so Brad, Eloy and I started, um, Bport in 2000, late 2002. Um, and it's, I'll just tell this quickly cause it's kind of funny. Uh, we were so proud of it. And I had a relationship with a person who was on the board of Apple. And so we gave them our business plan and said, hey, could you show this to the decision makers? And so our, our business plan actually made it uh, to Steve Jobs because it was in the, you know, in the boardroom. And uh, they sent us a really nice letter. And I, I'm so embarrassed that I don't have this letter. Um, <laughs> because it's probably like, you know, maybe we could sell it as an NFT today. <laughs> but anyway, exactly. it was a letter it was a letter from Steve basically saying, good luck. We love what you're doing. And actually we weren't asking for investment. What we wanted was we wanted to host it and say it was powered by Apple. And um, they wrote us a nice letter and say, good luck. We love your idea. And then like literally two weeks later, they started the iTunes music store and we were devastated. It's not like we thought they took our idea. It was just like, here we thought we were going to change the world and then the iTunes music store comes and it just took, took a dagger to our heart. And we almost quit to totally honest. Uh, we wow. all had to have a, we all went to the conference room and had a kind of a group hug. And we, what we decided was that there was no possible way that Apple could be better at this than us. And, and, and it changed our whole mindset about who we all were as a company and who we were going to be. And so, you know, 17 years later, um, we're still here and, you know, lots of things have changed. I'm no longer the CEO. Uh, I left for a while. I spent two years in Santa Monica working at Beats by Dre, building what became Apple Music. Um, I was the CEO of Beats Music um, while it was being built. Uh, I, did not, I did not take it live. Uh, Ian Rogers took it live. I was actually... When I was hired to build that company, it was a build versus buy strategy, and I was on the build team, and then they ultimately bought another company, um, and then they ended up scrapping the whole thing and started over, and then Ian Rogers came in and finished it, who, you know, I have great respect for Ian. 
but I mean, just to be working with Jimmy and um, Dre was such an honor. But but the reason why I'm telling the story is that's I got that job because we had originally tried Beat Source um, in 2008 or nine, um, and we had partnered with Jimmy. Um, he wow. had actually contacted me because they were starting the headphone brand and he wanted our opinion on, um, the sound and if DJs would use them. And so we flew to LA, we met with them. It was so cool. You know, I mean, you can imagine like fangirling yeah. it up a little bit, like <laughs> super <laughs> yeah, exciting. I'm, in my head. I'm, I'm like, I'm drifting <laughs> away from the show and I'm like, yeah, there I am with Jimmy Ivey. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Well, his son, his kid was a DJ. Um, I think Jamie was really early in his career there. I'm not sure if he was gigging yet, but he was kind of like into it. And, yeah. and so we all sat in the big conference room and tried the headphones on and they weren't great yet, you know, but we gave him some constructive feedback. And then we pitched him on our idea, which was beat source and beat source at that point was different. It was, this was the time when guitar hero and, um, rock band were, uh, big, big, big franchises. And right. um, what they were doing with those properties was they were selling the the games, but the games were powered by stems. And we it was exactly the same time that SoundCloud was on a on a real ramp with uh, mashups. And so we we I went and presented to him, and I I said, Jimmy, how much money are you making off SoundCloud off these mashups? Zero dollars, right? <laughs> and so why don't we sell the stems? And he was like. Oh my God, we're making the stems right now for all these games. Why don't we just sell them? And so yeah. that was the original beat source um, was this partnership with Jimmy uh, and Universal. And it, it basically did everything. That, the idea was that it would take all of that content and monetize it. Um, and of course, a bunch of lawyers got involved and ruined it. So it actually never happened. Uh, but that was the idea. And um, and so when, when the opportunity came to bring it back a second time, I was actually out of the company and Rob, the new CEO reached out to me and said, Hey, why don't you help me relaunch this? Um, and I was like, sure. And you know, he, he, at that point I didn't realize it, but he'd already done a deal with DJ city. Um, and, um, so I, that's when I introduced the Quickie and Phenom and Asher and the team. And it was just like an instant family connection. Like we've, we've just bonded from, from really day one. I have a massive respect for those guys and what they built with um, DJ city. And so it was a perfect partnership, you know, it's it, in our core DNA. And I, and I'll just be the first to admit, I'm not an open format DJ. You know, I played two weddings in my life and I was really frustrated. <laughs> I did, it's not really my thing, you know, like, uh, I was a, you're in I or you're out on those yeah, yeah, I was a, I was a club DJ and I just didn't, I didn't have that desire to do the other thing. And so, um, but, but I knew if I could actually partner with people that, that had this in their DNA, that I could help build the products for them. And so, yeah. um, that partnership started about two years ago and, you know, we're doing really good, you know, it's, and, and, you know, the freaking, uh, the uh, COVID was such a bummer for the whole world. Uh, and it, but it's, you know, there's always a silver liner on all these things, you know, it's allowed us to really focus on our product and our music and get our feet back under us and really get the product set up. And I have a bunch of stuff to kind of go through today, but you know, we're in a really good position and we're excited for DJs to start going back to work. And so that we can yeah. be there for them, you know? And, and streaming is that thing that, you know, I, I work with you guys, be two years in October at a launch up in Hollywood. Yeah. And, you know, to, again, I am that, that wedding DJ guy, but, you know, we come from the school of either vinyl or CD or flash drive or hard drive, laptop, multiple laptops, multiple hard drives. Everything has got to be tangible and it's got to be, you know, physically in front of you because there's a comfort zone that you oftentimes don't really want to walk away with. And it starts with, let's say, Bluetooth and it works its way up to streaming. And that's been that one thing out in the, the cloud that we all kind of looked at. And, you know, universally, I think most of us a few years ago would have said, nope, 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 nope. And I remember coming back from Hollywood that night thinking, wow, I, I just opened a laptop, I downloaded a link, I went into Rekordbox, I clicked on it, I got some music and I played it. And it was, it really was a turning point for me and as well as a lot of DJs. 
where today when you look at streaming and knowing that we're coming back from a bad year so we are going to get busier i think more people are going to have parties this sure. year yep. you know th this is the kind of thing where i think now is the time for a lot of us to embrace it are where are we as far as the beat source link within record box and the locker could you just go into that just for a little bit because i don't think a lot of people sure. the terminology might be confusing yeah absolutely so um you know streaming let's start with the word streaming we all say streaming because that's the word that people kind of understand the true definition of this technology is it's basically on-demand downloading um you are technically not streaming this to yourself you're downloading it and you're doing it extraordinarily fast we've moved all this content to the edge it's out in our cdn so it's as close to you as we can possibly get it all around the world um and then within seconds when you open your record box and you need that track it's there i mean it's certainly not as fast as pulling it off your usb i'm not i'm not going to oversell it but in three to five seconds you have you know a three to five minute track loaded and ready to go yeah um Amazing. and that's what just that's what just decent internet you know it's not like you know you're not gonna you're not gonna run into problems um and we've road tested this as much as we can and i know there's a huge fear here and this is what you talked about when we were getting into this we're in an inflection point and i look at it in chapters of three and i think we're in the first chapter the first chapter is we have to build trust it's just the fact most of the hardware in the market is not connected to environments like this but it's starting to happen um some of your competitors um have early adopted some of this with interesting um out outcomes but record box is a really convincing environment it really works um i it works know, really you well your, you can work yeah you can work your record collection super fast the what the thing i love about record box more than the other integrations is that i can build blended pay, playlists so i have a subscription to both beatport and beat source and I can build playlists from both libraries in inside a record box. That's the only software you can do that in. And so it's really powerful to build, you know, really customized playlists for the environment. So to just, you know, as we talked when we were warming up and, and uh, you know, I, I'm a firm believer that this is, this is going to be the future. Um, it's such a big transition though, that the trust curve just has to be there. And, and it's as without it's that yeah, yeah. without that kind of thing. Yeah. And so, you know, and so where you, how you in, invest and protect yourself is using our offline locker system. So if you're really worried about it, you just move all of what you were going to play to the, your local locker in your computer. And then you really are, you know, you're, you, you can leave for 30 days, never plug in and it's still there. Um, and so you're really protected at that point. So I encourage people that want to, that are, have a little insecurity to just, use our plans that have offline lockers. Now, right now, our lockers are relatively small and I don't wanna like discourage anyone. You know, they're like 50 and 100. And I know for a open format, that's extraordinarily small. Um, and I just know from the meetings that I've sat in and as early as like two days ago, I'm telling you these lockers within like, you know, a couple of weeks, I think are gonna be announced that they're like, I don't know, 10 times bigger. So, wow. so the opportunity to start to transition into into these environments is now um you know we have 30 day free trials if you know someone we can probably extend it for you we're giving away three accounts tonight to for you guys because we just want people to experience it it's a you know it's a it's a see it to believe it kind of experience to be honest um and i think you would say that too 100 yeah, uh, like i said that night i just remember going through it and just kind of the whole time in my head, I'm like, oh, this is that, you know, this is that voodoo stuff that just, you know, <laughs> this is we, I, oh, wait a second, it's playing. But, oh, oh, the next one's playing. And again, we're, you know, you look at the, the more club format DJs who are living on the edge sometimes, who are just trying to come up with music that they're drawing the crowd and, you know, focusing the crowd on following them. Whereas the open format wedding, you know, bar mitzvah, corporate DJs, we're going in in our head knowing at some point certain songs will get played, but it would be nice to be able to reach out during the event if someone came up and asked for something and search it. And I think for me and a lot of people like me, that's where this technology is going to really help us become better DJs, where we can go to a playlist that exists at BeatSource 
and draw from it immediately at the event where it might be new to us. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. And I, so one of the greatest things about DJ city and why we are so lucky to have this partnership is that it's, the, you know, it's literally the world's best open format curators without a doubt. And it's head by Spin, and, uh, you know, his team of curators are just extraordinary. And so you give them, uh, a mission and you're like, Hey, we need like the, the, uh, you know, we'll use the Latin stuff since we're on that topic tonight. You know, I have, I need Latin wedding, Latin pool party, <laughs> you know, yeah. Quinceanera, whatever, whatever you need, these guys have the right playlists and, you know, next month there'll be new playlists just as hot with the greatest tracks, you know? And I think that it's not so much like take those and just DJ out of them, but they are such great jumping off points, you know, to, to give your inspiration, start pulling tracks, build your own playlists, and then pull those playlists into record box and go for it. You know, it's like, it's literally that easy. Yeah. I know it's hard to believe because you really have to experience it. Um, and, and another thing is that our websites, both beatport.com and beatsource.com are not perfect environments for playlisting yet. And we know that. So, um, uh, what we've been building in the background is new environments. And we launched Beatport DJ um, about two weeks ago. Uh, and it's been amazing response. And Beat yeah, Source I mean, DJ is coming uh, in, I think, three or four weeks. Um, and so what that gives you is functionality, just like Spotify, where you can just drag and drop, build your playlist. It takes three seconds. Uh, right. And we can, we can do a screen share in a second when we're ready. And I'll walk it through a little bit just to show yeah. you. You know, and that was the thing, kind of looking at the record box linking, where what I found immediately was just the ease of use. But also, like you say, it, it's opening up because I think a lot of times we get stuck. You know, you mentioned it when we talked off air about going vinyl to CD and CD to flash drive. And, you know, there's a certain sense of like, oh, do I really need to do this? I, remember, I liked it when I went to the swap meets and bought used CDs back in the late 90s to you know, build my collection. Now it's just out there in the cloud. Like, so I think what I'm trying to get across to a lot of the people that I've spoken to about is the ease of use. Earlier, you had a record box DJ screen share. Mm -hmm. um, can you bring that up real quick as far as, you yeah. know, I didn't hear because my ears weren't in what you were going to show with that as far as the beat source link though. Yeah. So I'm risking this right now because we all know Rekordbox is a big app plus file sharing and screen sharing. And so. And, it, and if it becomes an issue, we can always just come back to you and walk through it. Yeah. You know, it's the internet. It's not us. It's the internet, my friend. It's the internet. The internet. Yeah. It's those two guys on the uh, bicycles that are setting up <laughs> just like the yeah. treadmill. That's, that's what this is. So, um, yeah, let me, should I just jump in and do it? I can't get, I can't share the audio into this environment, but I can share the screen. Is that cool? I, I think sharing the screen. Yeah. Because I think what, what I want people to walk away from with this talk is an, a better understanding of like, okay, yeah, this, you know, it's an on demand download. Like, what does that mean? I almost would, would love to see in record box, have you actually do something to show what people are, can expect when they get in there. Okay. I'm screen sharing right now. Oh, there it is. Great. Um, so, um, I'm logged in, um, let me move this over because I think my name might be covering some of that. Oh, no, that's good. Okay. So, um, I'm logged in to both Beatport and BeatSource. I'll close Beatport right now. So inside of BeatSource, I can load my playlist. Um, and so I've saved a bunch of playlists out of BeatSource. Uh, they're all right here. Um, I can just click through them. They're loading instantaneously inside the environment. Um, and then I can just literally grab and load these tracks. Um, it's pulling them down right now. And there, that track's ready to go. It's, it's ridiculously fast. And these tracks uh, are the instant down are the instant download you were talking about. These aren't on your yeah. computer. No. So <clears throat> I can come over here. I can grab more stuff. Um, Again, it's running slower than normal, I, just so everyone knows, because we're screen sharing. <laughs> sure. It maxes, yeah, it maxes I mean, that's out the CPU. Quick. Yeah. Excuse um, me, if you, had to, if you were even at an event and you had to pull that many songs down, what I'm seeing on my monitor here in the studio is that's yep. 
still very, very quick. So you saw that arrow, that red line goes zip. That was downloading. So there it is. So I have two tracks I've downloaded them. I mean, it was a total probably of five or six seconds of downloading. And we're off to the races. Wow. Um, and so and what we talk about every single product. day. Oh, so, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Well, just, I, just, I, I, just, I wanted to make sure we drove the point home that you have the 30 day free trial. Yeah, yeah like anyone and everyone that's watching this to go out and I really implore you to make sure you try that 30 day free trial, but you were going to say, I'm sorry. Um, I don't even remember what I was going to say. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't Jack. that important. No, no, it wasn't that important. Um, and so, um, you know, the, the, this is exciting, you know, and I think, listen, in, in, in our business from day one, we've always known one thing, content, content's king Absolutely. and and for every dj it, it's funny my, my i started in this industry in a download mindset right uh well actually as a vinyl purchaser and then i got into the download game and then when i went to beats by dre it was about um basically leasing ask, access and at that moment you have to roll your head back. Spotify was a green box with a search engine. There was no curation layer. There was none of what it is today, but it was right. cool. You could just literally type in, you know, a track and it was there. And, um, and so it started this like, you know, innovation curve that's taken a long time and these loops take a while, but now we're at that precipice where, you know, the logic is actually there. This is no longer some terrifying moment. We just did this in the worst case scenario. I loaded tracks from two massive pieces of software while I'm live streaming a video at 1080 <laughs> and yeah. it was maybe five seconds. So I am running at max CPU, max bandwidth and it's totally fine. Um, what what have so, you found is, oh, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, we, what we talk about on an everyday basis is the workflow. And so, you know, we're not, believe it or not, we don't consider ourselves in the, in the music business. Um, and we think that's really narrow minded. What the business that we believe we're in, quite honestly, is that it, we, we think of it very simply, like people make an emotional connection to the content they want. So they preview it and they're like, they visualize themselves, can I be playing this or should I be playing this? And once they decide they've made an emotional connection, now it's just wanting access to it. So there's two ways to get it. You can download it um, or, you can or you can stream it through our link. And so the, the ability to deliver on that connection, the visceral connection that you want, the confidence you want to go into your gig is really important. Uh, and so we talk about workflow a lot. What's the fastest way we can satisfy that? Now, I'm not saying Bport's good at everything. We're actually terrible at a lot of stuff, but we're getting better. You know, search is the worst thing, so don't make fun of us. We're getting better, I promise you. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, downloads, we're really good at. Um, curation, we're amazing at. Uh, music library, we're amazing at. I put us up against the best on the planet. I think we beat them all. Um, and we took that same logic into beat source. Who's the best people on the planet to work with? Without a doubt, it's DJ City. They're just the best. So we work with them. We build the, we build the confidence of the industry. Now we're in that adoption phase. So it's this one toe in the water, let me test it. <laughs> but, the, yeah. but if you looked at our, if you looked at our um, subscriptions curve, every week it arcs up like this, the industry is moving into here. And so without a doubt, these connected environments where I store my library in the cloud is the way it's gonna be. In five years, we're gonna look back and be like, holy cow, this is so amazing. Um, and, and that's what I, I envision. And that's even a couple of years ago, granted, you know, we're talking October, 2019. And then by the time, you know, I remember being at an event in February in Vegas of 2020. And it was a topic of conversation there with people about like, oh, I just did a show actually up in Hollywood. And it was pretty amazing and pretty quick. And then everything kind of fell apart. But I think we're now revisiting those conversations. And that's why it was so key to get you on here today and at least open people's eyes to the reality of this isn't what maybe some of us had considered it was, and it's a much different stable platform for giving availability to music that you may or may not be familiar with, but more importantly, that you probably do need to have. 
but right. also to let you expand your artistry. I don't, I don't care if you do an event for 10 people in the middle of nowhere. If you're a DJ and you're attempting to, to paint a picture with music, to me, you're an artist. And if there's a tool that you can utilize that will give you access to things that will allow you to paint differently, then I think that needs to be supported and it's amazing. The three licenses that you guys have so generously given us to give away today, what exactly do those entail? So um, the, the greatest thing they give you is our highest audio delivery and our highest offline locker. Now, as I talked earlier on the show, those offline lockers are relatively small at 100 tracks. That's because we're in this beta phase, like we're just learning this business, right? But I'm also know that, you know, we have these plans to up those dramatically. Um, we just had to get our infrastructure in place. Uh, you know, if you can imagine building these kind of tools that have like, uh, you know, significant redundancy because we can't have an outage. Like right. that would be just yeah, the worst no. case scenario, you know? So we have redundancy on top of redundancy on top of redundancy. Uh, so those were our priorities before offline lockers. Now that we feel comfortable that we've built in the redundancies and support, you know, we're basically on Google cloud now. So like if, you know, I suppose if Google went down, we would go down, but the likelihood of that is pretty low. I don't see that happening. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, and that was a big deal because AWS goes down, Amazon web services goes down and I'm, you know, props to Amazon, if anyone's on here from Amazon, but you know, that was a level of risk that we weren't willing to take. So we went to the Google cloud and it's, it's just much more robust. Wow. Um, and so, you know, we're just building a first tier product. It takes time. This stuff is really complicated, especially when you're trying to do it right. We have every license uh, on the planet that you could get for content and we pay to the second. So, you know, it, these are not like lo-fi environments, like a download is I click a box, a download happen, I pay on that download. This is how many frames of this that I play. If it ticks over 30 seconds, what's the rate, blah, blah, blah. And so these are really complicated environments to get right. Um, and, and for us, that learning curve has been really steep, uh, but we're doing really good now. So right. uh, we found our feet. Uh, we're on our way uh, to the right, I think, to lead the market, really. Uh, and that's our goal. Yeah. Well, I've seen a lot of these questions coming in here. Maybe I should, can, can I respond to a couple of these? Because they you know keep what I, I, I you're, you're like a mind reader over here, John. So I was just going <laughs> to say, um, I wanted to see if we could bring PJ on screen. I, I got to be honest with you. I think the confidence and the level of professionalism that you've brought to this has instilled a lot of kind of future strength in what we as DJs do. Because again, even though I'm sitting here in this environment, I'm always and first and foremost, a mobile wedding DJ. So I'm right. always looking at everything from a perspective of, you know, can I trust this? Is this fly by night? Are these guys winging it? Is this just a party? Is somebody's rich daddy backing them? Versus, wow, they've really put the time and effort in to build an infrastructure that I can count on down the road. Because my brides and grooms deserve only the best I can offer them. And it sounds like that's exactly what you guys have considered. PJ has been brought on screen, and I know we've had some questions. PJ, welcome. Mm -hmm. Good to see you. Yeah, how was St. Patty's? For sure. Day? Yeah, I've been I've been actually taking notes of all the questions, oh, specifically awesome. the beat source. So, um, Candace asks, uh, "Will I still be able to buy and download songs?" And I guess 100%. that. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, hundred um, percent. You know, I think I think there's a culture of collecting that will always exist in our in our industry, and we. We're, we're certainly not discouraging that. Um, what, what we think is important is library management. So whatever that library is, however you collect, there is a collection. So if you build a streaming library, it's more or less directory links that we're managing the library. If you build a local library, it's still directory links, but it's to your local files. Um, if you're like me and you've DJed as long as I have, you have content spread over 17 computers. It's <laughs> yes. a total disaster. And, but when you sign up for link, guess what? Your entire purchase history is available for streaming. Every track I've ever purchased from Beatport, and for me, that's 11,000 tracks, are available to stream. Wow. Just, just like that. So all 17 of those computers are now back in the cloud with me. Now, that's not a full solution because as we all know, we all play mashups or edits or we want 
access to things. And so that's the next phase of this is to be able to allow you to bring your content into our environment. So those are the next layer of, of tools that we're working on. Um, and that gives us the ability to really round out that workflow. So we'll have a curation workflow, you'll have your personal curated workflow, and then we'll be able to house and stream for you your personal collections. Um, and at that point, it's a pretty well-rounded environment. And I believe by then the CDJ 3000 will have modems in it. And so, you know, you're talking like, you know, 18 months, <clears throat> uh, maybe the hardware cycle is slightly longer than that, but it's not much longer. And, you know, every DJ booth on the planet is going to be wired for this. No doubt about it. 5G technology yeah, will be rolled out. Be it's just, you know, we're laying the we're laying the infrastructure for the future right now. So, yeah, it's a small market right now. It's tiny. We probably have, uh, I think, 25, 30,000 subscribers on this um, compared to, you know, millions of download customers. Um, but it's growing at a 90 degree angle. So if I showed you the growth chart, it's like this. Uh, and so that's what you want. You want to see that adoption curve hit those inflection points. And so we, we take this stuff super serious. We're in no hurry to be an overnight success. Um, we want to actually take our time and build this the right way. And so, you know, and listen, I, we talked about it the other day. I mean, Bport has been stumbling lately. You know, we, we had infrastructure challenges because we've been migrating out of a 17 years. We've hosted our own stack. Now we're moving to the cloud and that introduced some trauma to the system. So without a doubt, uh, our loyal customers have been hating on us, rightfully so. But we're getting our, we're getting our house in order and everything's coming back, uh, you know. So we're a big brand and we're a tough brand and we can handle the feedback and we accept it. And I, That's and I awesome. say that, and I say that face and straight into the camera, you know, we can do better and we will do better. And, you know, our, sure. our goal is to deliver the, deliver that expectation. I mean, you need to count on us, right? I mean, right. We're a, we're a yeah. utility layer. Yeah. It's not I about Bport. It's about the connecting point between us and the music. So we take ourselves out of the equation. And, uh, and I think moving forward, you know, I know we probably have a couple more questions, but I'm going to say it right now. I'd love to re even revisit this with you down the road as things change and get better. And as the season moves on for those of us that are working starting, you know, in the next month or two into the summer, it'll be interesting to see when that really peaks out where we are with things. And I'd love to come back and revisit it at that point. Yeah. And PJ, I saw another question that sure. I want to answer if you don't mind. And it's yeah. somebody yeah, just sure. posted in there. I don't know who it was, but they asked a really good question. Why the heck can't I subscribe to both libraries? Oh, that was by subconscious BS BSC. I was about to. That was the next question I had up. So. so, so the funny part of that is, I asked the exact same question. <laughs> we literally, if I showed you my calendar right now, we literally have meetings of how in the heck can we get these two worlds back into one? Um, and it, honestly, it was a it was a decision we made when we launched Beat Source to to house it in its own environment. And the deeper we got into it, we started to realize like, huh, does this actually make sense? Uh, it was a little bit too late. And, and you have to understand when you build these technology stacks, uh, BeatSource is on a different stack than BeatSource, than Beatport. Beatport is on an older infrastructure. BeatSource is brand new. It has the, the latest APIs. Beatport's an older API. And so they're not even, they don't even talk to each other. And so when, when Rekordbox got both libraries to load and then build a, uh, that you could blend playlists inside of there, then we knew that Rekordbox had jumped the shark on us and we were going to have to figure that out. And so, you know, we're working on subscription tiers right now. You know, I would imagine by the end of the year, we'll have subscription tiers where you can just have access to both libraries. That's um, going to be awesome. We're, yeah, we're working on it. And I know it's important. Um, we actually just made a decision early on that we probably all regret internally in the company. Um, but we made it at the time with the best data that we had available. Um, and so at that moment it was the right answer. And as we got further and we listened to our customers more and more, we didn't realize people would want both. Um, and so we'll get better. 
Sorry, I just didn't want to let that question die because I felt. Oh no, that was the next question that I had coming up. Yeah. But I mean, everything's so, a learning experience. So we got two more questions. Um, DJ Mike Marquez says, "I stream outdoor. What is the data bandwidth? I think he used the word pull, but what is the data bandwidth needed to for using Bport Link, and I guess for BeatSource Link as well?" Yeah. So listen, we've tested this ad infinitum um and mostly on tethered iphones uh it's extraordinarily fast i don't know i'm not an engineer so i can't give you like the answer but you could 100 percent play any gig you want tethered off your iphone but you would be foolish what you should do is move those playlists offline so you don't have that risk so your phone doesn't die or you're not figuring out how to charge your phone and stream and tether yeah. like like just move those That's playlists awesome. offline uh, use the offline locker functionality, and that's what it's there for, exactly that scenario. Um, and then you don't even worry about it. But sure. could you stream awesome. off? And I, I could just, I, I mean, uh, I think BeatSource, we're running an ad right now where Asher is out in a park in LA, uh, and they played for like why they were filming this content. I think they ran his entire battery down just playing, you know, for hours and hours shooting all these different angles, just literally right off his iPhone. Uh, and it was mm -hmm. amazing. Oh, yeah, he awesome. just put it in the chat. Yep. Yeah, uh, one from Chris Coffey. He says, what do you recommend for clubs or bars? In oh, wait a second. My engineers, my engineers are texting me. I think they're listening in. Oh. <laughs> they're, saying, <laughs> they're saying 4G is sufficient. So there you go. Uh, okay. <laughs> is it So is it 4G <laughs> with four like bars? Top. or to get to. You know? <laughs> yeah, let, we probably 4G LTE would be probably... Okay. The preferred. So my Nokia yeah. 5690 is out of the question, but I'm probably out of the question. When you start Sorry, up. you were asking another question and I interrupted you. I apologize. Oh, you're good. So Chris Coffey asks, what do you recommend for clubs or bars to install as far as Wi-Fi routers? <sighs> so I think most of the, um, I, th this is, this is one of those questions that's coming from a point of fear. So if you have, if you have basic Wi-Fi at your home, this is, this works totally fine. Uh, a nightclub, uh, would, should probably isolate the, the route for the DJ booth. They probably don't want to share it with the crowd. You know, if they're offering Wi-Fi into the room, they probably want to isolate this so it doesn't get maxed. But as long as it was a, a kind of a hardwired hub, uh, and you were going directly into it, I can't, I can't imagine how you would ever max out even close to max out the bandwidth. It's it's I, it's pretty straightforward actually. Awesome. And and I'm gonna I, do and it. I, good. I okay. actually think there's a way, if I'm not mistaken, you guys might know this better than me, but I'm pretty sure there's a way to rig the CDJ three thousands hardwired to a cable to get them connected to link. Uh, I haven't done it personally, but I think people out in the world have figured out how to do it. Um so we should figure that out. Yeah. Well it's you know sure. it, the fact that we can get into the booth now and get online and get our tracks just, you know, moving forward from where we started, it's still pretty amazing. Jonas, I can't thank you enough for being on today. Um, I think you've opened a lot of people's eyes to the benefit and where they can find themselves down the road on streaming. I want to figure out a way to give away these three pro licenses that you've so generously given to us. Um, are, if you, are you going to be able to hang out in the chat for a little bit, you think, or? Uh, yeah, I should jump to. I don't want to call you on it, but like if you've got like 10 or 15 minutes, because I think there's probably going to be some other questions coming in that we're not going to get yeah, to. I'll jump. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll jump. Yeah, I'll jump to Twitch um, and I'll start answering questions. In there. Okay. And I think we're going to go between trivia and a couple other things, but if. Pulse will be in there and you're still on the regular show. So you could private chat him if we've got okay. a way that hits you or a great question comes along. Maybe we want to reward that question with a license kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, no problem. You know, that first question was pretty cool. I think it was Catherine, if I'm not mistaken. Um, PJ can probably check that out and we can back chat that. Okay. Um, but again, Jonas, thank you so much. And I really want to revisit this down the road. Once we're back in season, once I've had a chance to go out and use this at a bunch of gigs, you know, I'd love to give my kind of real world opinion. Being at home in my office, you know, 
doing my thing on Twitch, I don't think is real world enough for the test of being in the field of battle as it is at a wedding. So I'm looking forward to that. And hopefully we can hook up again down the road with that. And thank you very much for the club therapy remix. Oh yeah. Greatly, You're welcome. Greatly appreciate it. Thanks that. for having me. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank I appreciate you. it, Jonas. Thank you very much. Yep, thank Jonas you. Apple, yep. Beat Source, co-founder of Beatport. Amazing to have him in here on the happy hour. Um, got a couple questions. We're going to move forward. We are kicking it right along. We are going to bring my buddy in. He is coming from the East Coast right now. He is our LATAM sales manager. He is a buddy, a guy that I've known for probably like 15 years. Amazing DJ. Um, goes by the name DJ Cream. So we're going to bring Cream in. We're going to be talking about mixing on the Latin vibe. And if, it, if that wasn't enough, it appears he's got a beautiful white setup. Cream, how are you? <laughs> how are you, Jay? I'm doing great, buddy. Good to see you. Cheers. Salud. I got the two dos X. I had to represent my Latino, no so. of See. course. <laughs> hey, oh, we have another one right there. JP, my amigo over here. Um, so what do you got in front of you there to start with? I got this beautiful white setup, the CDJ 3000 and the uh, DJM 900 Nexus 2. Uh, I love wow. this setup. It's, it's, it's amazing. Um, beautiful. obviously it's, it's, uh, it's my favorite toy right now. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That is beautiful. Now, you and I joke a lot. We have talked, you know, a million times on the phone because you are an expert. Um, a lot of people don't know this. You have done a lot of production work. You've done a lot of radio. Um, I actually recommended you and you replaced me as Daddy Yankee's main touring DJ when I left that tour and brought you in and I went with um Rachel and Yindel um, and Don Omar. But really, on the Latin tip, this is what I've, I've really been looking forward to this, along with the streaming with Jonas. Help us out here. A lot of us are doing weddings, we're doing events, we're doing parties, and we don't want to play either the wrong Latin track or play the right one at the wrong time kind of thing. So that's really what I want to talk about. But first, tell me about you as a DJ. Give me your background. All right, uh, for the people that don't know me, DJ Cream. Um, I grew up in Massachusetts uh, and I moved to New York in about 2001 uh, to uh, be part of the first reggaeton radio show on New York radio. And uh, from there, I've lived, you know, lived in New York for, for about 13, 14 years. I recently just moved back to Massachusetts. Uh, during my time in New York, I worked for the top uh, Latin radio stations uh, for Univision, for La Mega, um, and I was part of the reggaeton movement early on. So I, I got to work with a lot of the artists, uh, including Daddy Yankee. So uh, I, I I produced uh, and mixed his. Uh, he had a syndicated radio show, uh, so I was part of that movement. Um, I've been a club DJ. I've done uh, early in in my career. I did a lot of. Uh, like the fraternity and sorority, formal parties, weddings, quinceañeros. Uh, so I have a little bit of background of, of the mobile side along with, with the club side. Um, I've been DJing for over 20 years and got into music production early, uh, did remixes for, for uh, a bunch of labels and a lot of edits, a lot of my own, my own edits that I use for, uh, for my gigs just because you know, when I was starting out, there was no, there were no edits so to Latin music. So unless you created them, you know, it, they didn't exist. Uh, obviously, now you have, uh, you know, streaming services and record pools that have this content for you. But uh, before, it, it, that stuff didn't exist. So unless you created it, um, <laughs> it wasn't out there. Right, right. And, and that's the thing. I remember you and I talking years and years ago about certain tracks and, oh, I've got this gig coming up. You're like, oh, you know, look for this or check out this radio show and they've got this edit. And I know you were heavily involved in that in the, in the beginning of it. Now with the availability to us, whether it's on something like a beat source link streaming with Rekordbox or I'm going to, you know, my pools, the promo only pool that I go to a lot or remix pools, it's, I can get a lot of Latin music. The problem I think a lot of DJs, and by problem I mean challenge, not it's an issue. It's more of a we want to expand our knowledge. Can you kind of walk me through 
let's say, when am I going to play a reggaeton? When am I going to play a salsa? When am I going to play a banda? You know, I'm on the, as you know, I'm on the West Coast, even though I'm from Massachusetts like you. I'm out here on the West Coast. So I'm heavily playing cumbia, salsa, some reggaeton, a little banda, ranchero, different, different styles. Kind of help us walk through when we're hitting different styles and what we're looking for in those mixes. Yeah, and, that, and that's the biggest thing. I think if you're a DJ, especially for all the mobile DJs out there, the biggest thing is knowing what type of crowd you have in front of you. Uh, just because they say Latin doesn't mean <laughs> it, it just there's so many. Yeah, it's a big word. I, I think it's almost yeah. used inappropriately sometimes as far as different genres. Yeah, so I, I like to break it up into basically two categories. You have tropical music and you have urban music, which is like reggaeton, dembow. Um, now there's these other subgenres. Uh, that are you know kind of coming up those that's urban tropical yeah. is like salsa merengue bachata even like banda cumbia that's considered tropical uh, uh, so yeah. once you you have those two then you know you have a starting point and the other thing is what nationality are they because that plays a big part in what where, where you're gonna go uh if you're if you're basically in the east in the east coast let's say like anywhere you know chicago east um they it's going to be more tropical of like salsa, merengue, bachata. Um, but once you kind of, I think Chicago is like the middle point, you go west, then you get into, um, you know, bandas and more cumbias and, and that type of stuff. But, you know, that doesn't mean that you can't be in Queens and, and be DJing a, you know, a, a Mexican party. That That's where they're going to, it's going to be banda and cumbia. So finding out with the person that's booking you what type of, Latinos or what the culture is. Is it is it 80 percent Dominican? Then you know that the merengue is gonna be uh more like a faster 160 BPM merengue versus like maybe um you know a Puerto Rican party, it might be like the slower merengue. Um I think everybody the, the one song everybody knows is is you know suavemente by Elvis Crespo, but there's other tracks out there um that are kind of a little bit more modern that you can use and are still, you'll still get the same effect as a suavemente, but it, it's almost like playing, if you're, if you're at a party, do you play like staying alive or do you play, I got a feeling by black eyed peas? Like, uh, you know, they're I both a great example of it. Cause I, I know for me, and we've had this talk and it sounds funny, but it's the truth. Suavemente is a track that I will go to and it just always works. Yeah. But are there are there other tracks um, that are a little bit, you know, mo a little bit further, in, you know, <laughs> well, so yeah. Yeah. Old, I think. but are but that are going to give you like the uh, the same effect, um, you know. So those are the those are the things. Like right now, I you know I use a, a track that works, you know, ninety nine percent of the time, and it's a track by Omega and Daddy Yankee called "Que Tengo Que Hacer." It wasn't right that track. Uh, I'm actually going to just play a, uh, a clip of it. So uh, let me just forward it here. So this song here will create the same effect. Uh, this is an intro. So. so, and we'll get the name on the chat so you guys can, you know, yeah, check that would be out. awesome. But this track, you play this at any party right. and you will get people dancing. You know, yeah, so no, I like that. So you'll get the same effect. Uh, there's another song with uh, Juan Magan and Pitbull uh, called Bailando Por Ahí. 305, we call him at this show, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, this is another song that's a great party starter. And it's got some English vocals. So these tracks will give you that same effect like a suavemente will. Um, so, you know, make sure that, that, uh, and, and it's great, like talking about what, what, you know, B source is doing and the streaming. Uh, I think it's great because it gives you the ability that, you know, for you to have that as a, as a kind of like as an emergency in case you're DJing a party and somebody comes and asks you for that, you know, that track that you might not have. It's like, I can go to that, you know, that, that streaming source and pull from there and you know, you're going to get a good quality audio. You know, it's not like you're pulling from YouTube and all of a sudden, you know, the video version has like this movie scene into it and you're in the middle yeah. of the party. Um, no, and, I'm, and, I'm sure, and I'm sure DJs have gone through that. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've heard stories. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't me. I've heard stories. Um, one of the things I want to ask you, because, I, and again, I do this with Cumbia. 
I beat mix cumbia. So I can do hours of cumbia because there's a lot of similarities in the beats. The hooks tend to have a certain, you know, style to them. If we're not that familiar with different styles of Latin music, when we're mixing it, is the mixing on the beat the most important aspect or should we just let those tracks play through? No, you could you could definitely mix them. Uh, I think again, if we go back to the two categories of like urban and tropical, tropical songs they need to be beat matched. You can't really slam into them um, because you have to remember that it's like slow jams, right? When you when you're like if you're playing a slow jam, everybody's dancing to the beat, right? And the right. same beat that you're mixing to, they are dancing. So when somebody's dancing salsa, merengue, bachata, they are literally dancing to the same exact beats that you are mixing to. So if you go off beat or you make a sudden cut, they lose their steps. And that's when you start seeing people walk off the dance floor because, you know, uh, the idea is to keep the rhythm going. With genres like reggaeton and more of the urban stuff, you can DJ that uh, style of music like hip hop. So you can do like cut in, scratch in and, and slam it in and that's okay. Um, but when you're DJing cumbia, merengue, salsa, bachata, you want to keep the beats, you know, uh, you know, on and do some, some nice beat matching, making sure things don't crash uh, so that you can keep the dance floor going. Even when you're going from uh, one genre to the other, like I think a lot of DJs have that, that uh, misconception of like, oh, I can't mix this or, you know, uh, you know, I can't blend them. And yeah, yeah, you can. And you could still do some really cool, fancy things um, if you have the right tools and, and if you kind of know uh, the music a little bit. I think that's the biggest thing. When, you, when you're going to, to DJ Latin music, you, you, it's not something that you can just go and, and do it without doing a little bit of homework. Uh, you, have to, you have to do some preparation. I think that happens in, in, even if you're doing a non-Latin party, you still have to do some preparation. Well, it, I think it's not only knowing the music, but also having ideas. I, I text you years ago. It was a Michael, that Michael Franzine spearhead track that I can't for the life of me remember the name of, but I had played it at a wedding and they'd wanted a lot of Latin music. And I came out of it into Gasolina by Daddy Yankee and it like <laughs> erupted. And it was like, I don't know if it was, the, you know, the times or whatever, but it was one of those things that earlier I had thought like, okay, these are really close BPM. Let me listen to them. Oh, I could do this later. So I think we all look at things from that perspective of we got to pick up on this. How are you on going from, you know, more of a reggaeton track into a tropical track? Is that something that you find works well or should you sort of stay in one lane or the other? Yeah. So if, if you want to go like you could do, uh, I do a lot of transitions of like, Salsa into reggaeton because they kind of have the they're in the ninety the nineties BPM, right. um, but I could also do bachata and into merengue. I actually have a, let me just switch my camera here, um, and I actually have a an example that like this is going from a bachata song, uh, Aventura, and this it's gonna go into into the the merengue song that I was talking about. So a lot of DJs, you know, I, I like to use hot cues. Obviously here, I have some hot cues set up so I can jump around uh, in the song. And I actually created a loop at the end of the song. It has like a little bit of an acapella to it. So I'm gonna use that as a transition uh, to go into the merengue. So I'm, I'm doing a, a cross genre mix here. So here we go. So again, just because you're DJing uh, Latin music doesn't mean it doesn't have to be fun. <laughs> right. No, no, no. And that's, and that's the thing. We're all looking for how to enhance the experience. And, you, you know, and I've always been a big fan of like old new style, whatever music I'm playing, but also switching up gears, you know, doing the Celia Cruz kind of life into Staying Alive or into Usher or into something around there. 
what what advice would you give to someone like me who's playing a Latin track? What am I looking for when I get out of it to go into maybe more of a pop track that's not yeah. within that realm? So a lot of times what I, I like to to find is like like this song here that I was using, Dila Amor, is actually the original song, right? So it's not a DJ edit. Uh, if, if, if I probably have a DJ edit of it, they probably would have taken that little piece out. Um, so if, if I can find, like I, in, in this part of the track, I was able to find this all the way at the end where it says, I don't need no love. and it's just got like this nice acapella part to it that yeah. now I can create into a loop and I can, you know, hot cue that and use that to, to jump into something else. So look out for things like that. I mean, reggaeton is pretty easy because a lot of times about halfway through the song, they go into like a part of the song where there's no drums. So that's the, that's the opportunity for you to make ah. that change to the next one. All right, perfect. And then yeah. just make that transition there and then get out. So yeah. it's not going to be an upsetting thing if I'm cutting in and out of tracks like that when I want to switch out gears fast. Yeah, and especially with reggaeton, like I said, it, it's you can use um, more of the urban style of DJing uh, with that with, with with that style of music, but when you're going to the tropical, the cumbia, the you know bachata, merengue, salsa, it, it needs to be smoother blends, uh, and like always keep in mind that the people are dancing at that same rhythm that you're DJing. So if you go off beat, they go off beat. Yeah, that's that would explain why I've cleared so many dance floors over the years where it just it's like <laughs> running, but then they come back eventually, which is a good. Um, I wanted to see. You know, again, you and I have known each other a long time. You used to be a demo DJ. Now you're doing sales down in Latin America for Pioneer DJ. What what's going on down there? What do we have new? What do we have exciting? Can you what what can you tell me about that experience and what you have going on? Well, yeah, I mean, obviously with uh, with the pandemic, you know, it's 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 hit all over the world. So obviously, Latin America has been affected by it, and. Uh, you know, some of the, these countries don't have the resources that, that we have here. So it's, it's been a little bit slower to, for them to, to recover from, from the pandemic. But um, yeah, for the most part, we've seen a lot of people that, that, uh, that maybe were, you know, doctors or, you know, had this other profession now are like, hey, I'll, you know, I wanted to be a DJ and I never had the time. Now I'm home. Like, I'm going to buy a controller and, and, and get started. So we've seen a lot of that. Um, the online business, uh, a lot of a lot of uh, stores that maybe weren't set up to sell online, obviously learned quickly that online sales, um, and and even countries, countries where uh, banks weren't really giving credit to anybody, now they're giving credit because they know that they people want to buy stuff. Right. Uh, so that yeah. has been the, the pandemic has really affected that in in, in many ways, um, and DJs are obviously also turning to, to streaming. So I think streaming has, uh, it wasn't really big in, in the Latin scene, uh, where now we are seeing more and, and even uh, a lot of DJs that are getting on Twitch, doing Facebook, Instagram, uh, where this was really non-existent before. Now, do you see that streaming scene growing more and more as far as the Latin American scene is concerned? And, yeah. and, and how, how is that gonna impact what we're doing? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think it's great that that the streaming service is growing. And one of the things in Latin America that that is kind of crazy, uh, where you know where it's different, is that like when you, everywhere you go in Latin America, there's Wi-Fi. There's free Wi-Fi everywhere. Like you're walking down the street and there's Wi-Fi. Like the town wow. has Wi-Fi. That's and awesome. I'm like, I'm like, wait, we don't have that here. <laughs> like, <laughs> like <laughs> I want free Wi-Fi. Yeah, like. You know, it's like, wait, you know, like literally I remember being being in Peru and walking around and it's like the, the city has like free Wi-Fi. So you're like out in the park and there's free Wi-Fi. That's so having it. having streaming, uh, you know, being part of this and, uh, and having these streaming services and, and, and what we're doing with Rekordbox, I think is great. Um, it's going to take a little bit of time. I think uh, like Jonas was saying, uh, people have that kind of like fear factor. Uh, and, and one thing that I have to I have to really like give him props, like being, you know, the co-founder of a company and, and admitting that it's not perfect and that it's something sucks is really, really good. It's good to hear that. You know, yeah, hear like, honesty. I think, I think yeah, we, we like, turn that corner of like, Hey, here's the shiny thing that you need to know. And I really respect that he was willing to do that. And that's, yeah. a, you know, we're very fortunate in this industry 
we, we are surrounded by people that I think a lot of us, for the most part, respect because they're genuine and honest about things, you know? And that's even calling you up being like, hey, bro, I'd love you to come on the happy hour. Let's talk about Latin music and mixing it. And, you know, it's something I do and you do. And, you know, again, you're another good example of somebody that I respect in the industry who's always honest and upfront about things. So I appreciate that. And the fact that he was willing to lay it out like that. A lot of respect. It's great because, you know, we, we, we need more of that. And, and with me, with Latin music, I'm always a guy, you know, I think. Uh, ever since I, I, I started working with Pioneer, I was always that, like I was pushing for the Latin market, pushing for uh, to, to kind of like for, for us to be seen, to be heard. And, and I think there's a lot of DJs out there that uh, could benefit from, from this information. And we want, we want you guys to go out there and represent. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're Latin or not, but if you're going to DJ a party, we want you to be successful. And, um, and at the end of the night, you could get that you know, that extra tip, that extra, you know, uh, or that great review or a great referral because you played the right music uh, yeah. at, at, a par at a Latin party, even if you're not Latin. All right. Well, and that's, you know, I, I take, a, you know, we goof around a little bit on the air. I take an immense amount of pride in every event needs to be as good as it is. You're only as good as your last event. So every event has to be great. And it's not a, a strict thing as much as just you do. You want to grow and learn as a DJ. You want to get better and pick those things. Hold on. My producer's talking to me one second. What's that? <laughs> Bad Bunny? He Bad said Bunny. part of the remix. Okay. <laughs> it's happened a few hundred times. Bad Bunny's turned down another remix I sent him. Ah, okay. <laughs> I'm live Celia Cruz, but I don't want to make this show about me. Um, you know what? I'd love to bring PJ in because I know we have a bunch of questions going on in the chat. Okay. And I'd I'm love right here. There he is. PJ, how are you? I asked earlier, you were very busy. How was your St. Patty's Day? Mine? I chilled at home. <laughs> ah. So I found out when uh, you guys started talking about it that day. <laughs> <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> you were really connected, yeah. huh? <laughs> I'm time. always staying inside here. I'm, I spend a lot of time in this room. So yeah. <laughs> I thought PJ was PJ O'Rourke. I'm just saying. I just okay. I should have put the LED lights green today. But... Right. Well, the GJS. Yeah. Well, that's okay. J, you know, my producer JP had to point out to me that St. Patty's Day was yesterday, and I'm the Irish guy. So <laughs> yeah. Um, again, Cream, thank you so so much for being on today, chit chatting with us about this. I brought PJ in because I wanted to keep you on air and see if there are questions that came in for DJ Crema, or as he's yeah, known we do. Colombia with DJ Fo, DJ Arata. <laughs> but that's a whole nother story. Hey, I'm hey. That. And I think there's DEA. No, it's, we, we, we'll skip that story. Um, any questions, PJ? Yeah, I do. I have a couple questions here regarding mixing Latin music. So Samson Morfo, I hope I didn't mispronounce that, sorry. Uh, he asks, what about crossover genres, like let's say involving heavy metal and playing reggaeton after, or vice versa? What would you do? Well, I mean, I've never actually tried that, so it would be a cool thing to actually now, now you know, I want to I wanna try that probably tomorrow or something. Listen, I, I, would, I would give you this advice. Find some good reggaeton, a song that has a good reggaeton intro, like just drums, Lay it, lay it over the guitar part of a heavy metal song, match the BPM, use the, the filter, and you should be good. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's, sure. you know, we, we could just, I, I said earlier, my, my immediate answer was Sepultura. <laughs> Sepultura is a um, metal group out of, I want to say Brazil. And I would just play them, call it a day. <laughs> PJ, other For questions? Sure. So next, we got one from Antonio Martin. How do you keep reggaeton on beat when the snare isn't on the two and four count? Okay, so uh, really, the the easiest thing is ignore the snare, right? It, it's it's just follow the drum. It's still it's a four on the floor kick, right? Yeah, it's still there, right? Mm -hmm. So as long as you follow that, forget about what the snare is doing, because um, yeah, the snare is it, it's all over the place these days. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's you know, I, I, the way I've always I've always uh, explained it is, if you want to DJ Latin music and keep the beat, just think that every song has an EDM kick underneath it, uh, just slower. That's it. 
I mean, because salsa, sure. it, yeah, it, it, just uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah, it has a percussion, but it still has the, you know, you could still mark it. So if you as long, just make pretend it has an EDM kick underneath it, and and you will be good. Awesome. Um, so the snares are traditionally way off in reggaeton. Yeah, there's just because mm -hmm. it, you know, it, it's, it's a live like, drummer. Yeah, it's the ladies' night. Cool in the gang starts at one oh nine, ends at one twenty. <laughs> That, yeah, that and, nightmare. And, and, and you'll have records like that. Um, like with salsa, you'll have records that start at like 89 BPM and they end up at 95. Uh, usually with those records, I'll mix them and then it'll be the last record on my set. So I don't mix out of it. Yeah, <laughs> um, so you're trans yeah. yeah, sometimes with Latin music also is like, I think a, a big mistake that DJs try to make is they try to mix everything. And sometimes you need that, like the song needs to end and then you start with, Something else powerful. I would do the horn. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, it's a great way to get Sometimes out of it. Sometimes you need that break, you know, and not everything has to be, you know, the, the whole time the music has to be mixed. I think, uh, like, if you played a good salsa set and you played like four songs and, and, the, and people were, you got to think about it. People are, you know, they're dancing in couples, they're turning, they're, you know, all over the place. So after four songs, um, you know, they're going to be tired. And and which up the floor a little bit, yeah, and and exactly, and, and in, like if for me, I used to do this in clubs a lot, and and the owner, like I, you know, early on, I would get owners would like come up to me, like, "What are you doing, man? Everybody's dancing, nobody's drinking." I'm like, "Give me a second, you know, <laughs> let them dance, and then they're gonna run to the bar." I'm yeah. like, you know, so it's you create that vibe. Um, so sometimes you need that stop, like you need to just let the song play end, and then move on to to the next genre. Yeah, no, totally. I think that uh, you're kind of basically segueing into the next question from Gina Carrera. She says, "What about music? What about music in different tempos that don't have a beat in the beginning? Basically, soft pad intros, you know." Uh, so what I usually try to do when it's songs like that, depending on the type of song, uh, I either um, I'll do like a, I call it the sandwich effect. <laughs> uh, so I'll play a song that has an outro. I'll mix the song that doesn't have an intro on top of that outro, and then I'll use another song that has an intro to mix out of it. So it's kind of create, you use two songs that have intro, the, the intro and an outro, uh, and then you mix it that way. And sandwich them. That totally makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then uh, DJ Liz, he's asking, what features on the CDJ will work well with Latin music? I mean... Right now, I'm using I'm using the CDJs with uh, with Rekordbox DJ, uh, kind of in, in HID mode. But I mean, for me, the hot cues. I think the hot cues are the biggest thing because it allows me to jump around in the song. Um, so, like, if I I'll, I'll do a quick uh, example of uh, kind of what I was doing earlier. Right. So, if I have this. Uh, this merengue song, right? And it's ending, and I'm gonna use the intro of this song. I can hop around between the hot cue that I had with the with uh, with the sample, and then jump to the beginning of the song. So I can do something like this. So there I use a loop and then just the hot cues to jump uh, in and out of the track to get back to the, to the beginning. So um, to me, the hot cues are probably the most important thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a great answer for that question. For sure. And another thing I wanted to, to let you guys know is that, you know, when you're doing Latin music, it, it's, it's, you know, especially if you're not used to playing with Latin music, you know, build sets. Like it's okay to to have, you know, a set of these tracks. Uh, do your homework. Do your research. Uh, like if Routine. you're playing bachata, 
you know, make sure you, you include Romeo Santos. He's like the biggest bachata artist in the world. Aventura, which was the group that he was part of. Uh, so make sure you build your sets uh, with the right music. Uh, do your homework with whoever is booking you um, so that you know kind of like where you, you know, what merengue you should be playing, what bachata. Also, one of the great things with streaming services is, is having those, those edits because uh, some of this music is not easy to make. So having the DJ edits, whether it's a, a record pool you, you, you're subscribed to or, or streaming, uh, get the edits, get the clean versions, because obviously you don't know what they're saying. And, and one of the biggest things, especially with reggaeton, is that, you know, it's, it's explicit. So you want to make sure that you have the clean versions to these songs, because that could really... I've, I've made that mistake before. Yeah, it could really make or break your party um, <laughs> when you... I, when I you always do. download the clean, but I don't know the difference. Like, literally, yeah. I'm... You know, do they say <laughs> but, at, but at least if you're, if you're, you're trusting that the pool or the, the, you know, the subscription that you're in, that they're, you know, that they're cleaning it up. Yeah. No. Because and and just like I've done with you, I mean, famously, what was it? Uh, like a bunch of years ago, you and I were talking to a young Colombian girl and out of nowhere came the whole, um, mi gente. Mm -hmm. And it was like, I'm like, what's that? You're like, Oh dude, you don't have mi gente. Like, yeah. <laughs> no, what about this one. And it's like, I think a lot of this is communicate with people you know, and, and ask them, I, I know you won't mind. I'm going to give your cell phone out right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, so one of the, one of the reasons, one of the other reasons that, that, uh, that I wanted to come on and, and, and share some information with you guys is that uh, for those of you that don't know uh, and speak Spanish and, and want to get more content and, uh, you know, and, and, and view things in, in your natural language, uh, in Spanish, we have Pioneer DJ Latino America. Uh, so it's uh, it's a page that I manage uh, for Pioneer DJ, and there we we upload all our content in Spanish, and we're going to be having uh, a, a Spanish, let's say, uh, version of of this show, Happy Hour with DJ Fo, uh, which we're going to be oh. doing a lot more uh, Spanish awesome. content, awesome, uh, awesome, awesome. interviews with with Latin DJs, uh, and we also have Pioneer DJ Brazil with uh and jaybu is uh, the person that handles that account and he's going to be doing things in portuguese so uh if you you know if you're watching the stream and and you want to check out content in your uh, native language whether spanish or portuguese uh piney dj offers those two pages where you can where you can follow us and, and get that content that's that's totally awesome i know fo called me he wants me to be a guest at one point talk about mixing wham and the thompson twins yeah, he just said that you need to do everything in Spanish, so I, I know you're getting ready. I mean, you get a last wham, a day last uh, consequence, so I'm good. I mean, you live in San Diego, you might as well speak Spanish, right? <laughs> no say. You'll think of poco dinero and then tell me negro betsias, pantalones. That's what I have to say. Donde esta mi corona? Ay, I can't thank you enough, Cream. Thank you so much for being on here. PJ, thank you very much. Pulse, thank you. No problem. Jonas, and I think we're we're bringing yeah. back Jonas on. We is Jonas still in the chat? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, let's bring him back on real quick. We need to give away these licenses. Where are we with the giveaways? I've been preoccupied with the show, but I want to make sure that we're giving this stuff away. Um, mm -hmm. Something at least. Jonas, you hear us? Yeah, there's Jonas right there. I'm here. Um, did we give any of them away? I don't think so. They were running the contest in the chat. Oh, okay. Then we'll do this. We will get the results from the contest. I'll have Pulse and PJ give me those numbers. We'll then announce the winners on our Facebook page, which, of course, is just Facebook at Pioneer DJ USA. And we'll announce all the winners of the Record Box DJ license as well as the Beat Source Pro license, which if you're a DJ, which you obviously are watching this, going into your season and getting a year's worth of that, it's going to be amazing, especially as Jonas said, with things ramping up as we go forward. So I think that would probably be the best for time and everyone's convenience if we make the announcement on our Facebook page. Again, Facebook at Pioneer DJ USA, just like Instagram, Twitch and YouTube, and we will get all the names from the contest that win and then get them back over to Jonas to get contacted for the license. Is that cool with you, Jonas? Yep. 
Awesome. Well, again, I, I can't thank you enough. I don't know if you've been here the whole time. You've probably heard Cream had some nice things to say. Oh, about you. He's excited. Um, yes, PJ, I heard you. So, so regarding the contest, uh, we could actually do it live right now with Pulse. Then let's do uh, it. Let's do it now, so that okay. the people that have been nice enough to spend their yeah. time with us today, mm. let's let's get them on <laughs> yeah. board and see them win. So These I people want to get on Beam Force right screen. now. Come on, Jay. Let's, let's do it. Let's let's get the winners announced as we speak. I, I think uh, we've already given away the record box uh, licensed ones, uh, but we've still got those uh, the Beat Source um, accounts. Let sh should we do that? We want to do that right now. Yes, let's do that right now. All right, Jonas. You, I'm going to just give a, a simple question. Maybe we can, uh, you'll know the answer to this. What year okay. was Beat Source formed? Or Be let's say, look, what year was Beatport formed? Now, you may have already hinted at this earlier in the, uh, in the chat, but uh, you know the answer. So let's get those answers coming in, guys. Whether you're on Facebook or you're on Twitch right now, if you know what year the Beats Beatport was I formed think Mike, and officially I think started. Mike Marquez just won. Oh, just like that. There you go. Okay, so there's one. We've got three to give away? Yes, so there goes one. Mike Marquez. Okay, Mike. Uh, do, you, do you have a, Jonas, do you have another question? You want to just throw something out as a, as trivia? Oh. Oh, he had a good one earlier. Let him do the one he did earlier. Jonas, the one oh. you did about... Um, I think that might be too... But, too <laughs> oh, for which one? Remember the one we talked about earlier? CDJ? Oh, well, yeah. Do you think anybody knows that? It's pretty secretive. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so <laughs> the CDJ, the, 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 yeah, the CDJ um, was inspired by what technology? It's a little yeah, bit trickier. Works. It is. But once you hear the answer, it's actually totally obvious. Yeah. What's the greatest problem that CDs had? Maybe that's a better way to put we're, it. We're talking, we're talking mid to late 90s, in case you guys are wondering. And what did the CD? such an answer right now. <laughs> Nobody has a No, I was I, there when it happened. Oh, they're, they're a few seconds behind us. You remember, there's the delay oh, okay. in, the, uh, in the chat. There it is. Oh, Mike, you can't answer twice. <laughs> yeah, Mike. <laughs> Bill. <laughs> hey, but Bill what, what, uh, should we get more specific? Bill got it. Yeah. No, that's it. <laughs> so where did it come from, though? That's the right answer, but that's not really the answer. Where did they borrow that technology from? I know. I had to live it. We're getting close. That's <laughs> crazy. How are we CDs. I, I, just a bit of humor here. I once witnessed somebody lick a scratch CD, convinced that that would help it play without skipping. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. There it is. Oh but, wait, they got it. Pro, pro FBI. Oh no, he's on our team. He can't have it. Oh. <laughs> well, somebody else. Somebody else needs to. Quickly, uh, someone just answer. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best part the of the delay. <laughs> oh, who just dropped? Was uh, okay. Who dropped out? Oh, he's giving clues. Okay, I did. I'm back. Oh, we got one. You are the D. You got it? Or she got it? Yes. Yeah. Yep. I don't know. So it was borrowed from, yep. Yeah, it was borrowed from the car audio industry for the anti-shock technology, and they had a small amount of memory in those CDs, so it was buffering. It was the first, like, buffering concept with onboard RAM inside the devices, and there was one kid at Pioneer in Japan who was also a DJ, and he was like, this would, this would get these CD players into the DJ booth because they couldn't get I, it in I there because they skipped. You, that came around in the CDJ 1000. The 500s and 700s didn't have that, and they would skip. I had tennis balls bolted back-to-back -to, -back to make my anti-skip case for my dance floors. It was a lot of oh, fun. Oh, really? Yeah. So I... I, I uh, it's not really a trivia thing, but I will. Uh, you can always tell old DJs that started their career playing vinyl, <laughs> like myself, because none of them dance with their feet. They all just wiggle side to side because they just learned not to make a lot of movement in the tall. DJ booth to skipping yeah. the vinyl. Right. I just thought they can't dance. <laughs> but, <yeah. laughs> well, <laughs> I, I do want to say real quick, before we do the third one, it's yeah. come to my um, 
tension that we're going to hold the third license over and continue it because Ooh. of the people that are going to watch this on playback. So we want to open the third license up to those people as an opportunity. There you go. And on Jonas's question, I will never forget going down Commonwealth Avenue in beautiful Boston in the mid 80s in an Audi 4000 because the young lady said, I have a CD player in my car. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding. <laughs> Went out and it just, every bump, <laughs> just skipped every bump. <laughs> I just remember thinking like, this sounds so good, but I worked in radio in the eighties and we would get on air and say, coming up next, the police synchronicity on compact disc. Like it was going to sound that much better out of Jensen six by nine coax speakers yeah. in your 74, you know, <laughs> Springer. So, you know, we all learned things today. Isn't that the first one with the anti-skip? Blaupunk? Blaupunk? Was it Blaupunk? Well, they, they were, yeah. it could have been. I had those in a Volkswagen, 87 GTI. Okay, so okay. we're now right. we're now wandering away from the topic, which means it's probably <laughs> time for us to call it a day. I can't thank everyone enough. Jonas, thank you so much. I thank you. talking about BeatSource Link. We're going to hold over the last license to go for our playback. PJ, always there for the show, Ninja Warrior and New York Times bestselling artist, Pulse, <laughs> my production staff over here, the thousands, the one I want to call out though, JP, the only one that counts. And to all of you for watching today, thank you so, so much. We're going to be back in two weeks and we're going to be talking about the mobile DJ experience. Why are we going to be talking about the mobile DJ experience? Because I'm going to tell you to this camera why because it's what we're talking about. So the next show, I believe, April 1st, if I have the dates correct, if I don't, I'll post it on Facebook. But the next show, April 1st, we're gonna be talking mobile DJ. We've got some big guests. We'll announce that coming up shortly. <clears throat> Excuse me, to all of you, peace. Thank you so much for tuning in. Remember, pioneerdj.com and at Pioneer DJ USA for YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitch. Peace. To all of you, thank you so much. We're out.